In this video we're going to look at creating and running automated tests in IntelliJ IDEA and how to get coverage information for your tests. IntelliJ IDEA aims to make it as easy as possible to navigate to or create tests. So if I try to navigate to the test for a production class and the IDE can't find one, it will ask you if you want to create it. By default, you have several options for the type of test to create. We're going to use JUnit 4 as this is still the most common framework for Java unit tests. You can of course change the name of the test if you wish, and there are options for generating setup and teardown methods, or tests for the methods in the class you're testing, but we're going to start with an empty test class. You can generate a new test method using Command N or Alt and Insert for Windows and Linux. IntelliJ IDEA makes it easy for you to sketch out the test you want to write, offering the usual code completion and suggestions. When you're ready to run the test, you can do this a number of different ways, which we'll show throughout this video. The first, and probably easiest approach, is to use the gutter icon on the test method to run it. Our test fails, as we expected since we haven't implemented the functionality yet. IntelliJ IDEA shows you the failure, why it failed, and offers a detailed comparison between actual and expected values, which is very useful for more complex values, such as JSON or complex domain objects. We can navigate back to our implementation to make the simplest fix for our test, and this time we'll use the run icon in the navigation bar to run the test again. Now it passes, so everything goes green. This time, when we choose to navigate to the test, IntelliJ IDEA locates our new test class and we can jump straight to it. IntelliJ IDEA makes it very straightforward to develop in a test-driven development way. For example, now I'm going to create another test to identify further functionality for my analyze mood method. This time I'll use the keyboard shortcut shift Control r on the Mac or shift Control f 10 on Windows and Linux to run my new method. To get back to the production code from the test, we use the same shortcut as getting to the test from the code, shift Command t or shift Control t on Windows and Linux. Mastering these shortcuts will significantly speed up coding and testing. Now we're in the production code, we can make the simplest changes that will satisfy both tests. When this is done, we can rerun the last test with Control f 5 and we should see this turn green as well. Fixing problems isn't always this easy, so let's go back to our test class where we have another new test method. The gutter icons in the test class show a green circle next to tests that have been run and passed, and our new test just has the green run icon. When we run all the tests in this class using the class level gutter icon, we can see our new test fails. Clicking on the failing test brings it into the editor. If we don't know why this test failed, we could put a breakpoint in the production code, and then we can choose to debug just the failing test by right clicking on it in the run window. I can even put breakpoints on lambda expressions in my stream operations, and then step through to see what the problem might be. When I think I've solved the problem, I can rerun the test as normal. There are a number of options and settings for running tests in IntelliJ IDEA, so to demonstrate these I'm running all the tests in a real application. By default, the IDE will show you the state of all tests that have been run. As these tests pass, you see the green icons and the test names in the run window. Since we're probably more interested in failures than successes, you can choose to hide tests that passed. Similarly, you can hide ignored or disabled tests if you choose. You can sort the tests alphabetically, rather than have them in the order they were found, and you can expand to see all the individual test methods or contract to hide the detail. The run window shows a lot of information about the status of the running tests, like how many have run, how many there are in total, how many have been ignored, and how many fail. And the progress bar gives you an idea of how much longer the tests will take, and it will turn from green to red if a single test fails. Track running test forces the window to show every test as it runs, and lets you follow the progress of the tests. You could turn off inline statistics, which will hide the time it took to run each test. There are numerous other settings you can experiment with in order to have the run window show the information to you in the most useful way. For example, you can have the window jump to the first failing test when all the tests are finished, so you can fix any problems immediately. Now let's look at test coverage. 
It's great to have a series of tests that pass, but it can be more useful to understand which areas of your code are covered by these tests, and more importantly, which code is not covered by tests. This time when we run all our tests, we select Run All Tests with Coverage. By default, this will use the IntelliJ IDEA coverage tool, but you can select other tools like Jococo in the settings. When all the tests are run, the coverage window shows a breakdown of the coverage by package. If we navigate to the main package of our application, we can see which classes are well covered by tests and which might need more thorough testing. This information is also available in the project window at the package and class level. When we open a class in the editor, colors in the gutter show the coverage level. Green for high coverage, red for low. These colors can be configured, which may be particularly useful if you're like me and have problems distinguishing red and green. As with all IntelliJ IDEA windows, the coverage window has options for customizing the display according to what you find most useful. And you can generate an HTML coverage report. So if you do run your tests with coverage in the IDE and want to share the results with the rest of the team or external parties, you can share this report and it contains all the same information we just saw, including colors on the source code to indicate good and poor test coverage. These testing features aren't just for Java or JUnit. Right at the beginning of the screencast, you saw IntelliJ IDEA has support for multiple JVM testing frameworks, including the groovy framework Spock, which you can see here. Many of the features we've shown in this video are available in these other frameworks, and even for testing in other languages like JavaScript. In this video, you saw how to create, run, rerun and debug tests, as well as being able to see the coverage of your automated tests. Thanks for watching.